So welcome back to my channel. And in this video, we're going to walk through how to use a stock screener exactly. And we're going to talk about when you should use it, why you should use it, and what are some of the common criteria you should use depending on what kind of investor you are. So with that being said, let's dive into it. So before we start, I just want to celebrate another case study within Investing Accelerator where Chris made an unusual profit from the Malaysian Stock Exchange. So he made 27% within one trading day from UMW. So after he learned the materials within Investing Accelerator, he applied it to the Malaysian Stock Exchange. Uh, so that's actually quite interesting. I think he's my first Malaysian student that actually bought a Malaysian stock using uh, the materials within Investing Accelerator. So congratulations, Chris, for doing a fantastic job. All right, I look forward to your next profit. So in terms of the giveaway this time, we are doing a, a free book giveaway for 100 likes. So if we reach 100 likes within this video, then we'll give away a free book, which is the second volume of Harmonic Trading. So this book is really around technical analysis and it is one of my favorite. It's almost like textbooks on technical analysis. So these are more advanced strategies and more advanced patterns that you can study. When I was studying technical analysis six, seven, eight years ago, it is one of the most useful books that helped me a lot to master technical analysis. So if you want to win this book and get this book for free, then you can like this video, leave a comment below, and once we reach 100 likes, then I'll select one person within the comments uh, for this book. So we can get started. So before we jump into the exact criteria you should use, let's talk about stock screeners and why you should use it and when you should use it. Because I think there's a lot of hype around stock screeners, but there's actually a lot of work that needs to be done after you screen for a stock. And let me explain. Now, when you're investing, you are competing with a lot of different people. There are mutual funds, there are hedge funds, there are people who are actually focuses and analyzes uh, different industries day in, day out. They get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars each year just to analyze and focus on specific industries and stocks. So when you are investing, you should always start with the companies you know, you like, and you trust. But if you decide to use a stock screener because you want more ideas, which is usually the reason, then that's what this video and trading series is all about. So usually people use a stock screener because they want more ideas. And that is totally fine, but you just got to be prepared to do the work afterwards once you find a potential candidate. Now, when should you use a stock screener? You should use a stock screener at the very, very beginning of your trading journey. Before you have a list, before you build up any ideas and somehow you're looking for new ones, then you can use a stock screener to base on a couple of criteria to find some good starting points. And sometimes you might want to do it on a monthly or a quarterly basis to see if there's any additional stocks to be added to your watch list. And that's really the purpose of stock screener. And when you're dealing with the whole population or the whole universe of stocks on NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, you really want to use some sort of more restrictive criteria so then you only focus on a handful of companies, probably less than 30, so then you don't need to do that much research on it. And that is really important because you have a full-time job, you know, you have a family, you want to spend time with the family. So you don't want to be glued in front of the computer all day because that's just wasting your time. So when you're thinking of criteria, you want to be very selective, you want it to be meaningful, and you want it to be restrictive. So then you start with a very small population of good quality stocks, and then you go from there. So now let's dive in to the stock screener. So like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using Chartmill to do the tutorials uh, for the next couple of videos because I think it gives me a bit more criteria to choose from. So then I think that will be more beneficial to you as well. So before you even touch the stock screener, one of the things you need to determine is what kind of investor you want to be. And you need to determine your investing approach before you start playing around with the stock screener, because unless you have some sort of plan or you know what you're looking for, then you're just gonna be wasting a lot of time on your stock screener. From my experience after investing or trading for 12 years or so, there are usually two main types of long-term investors. And now I'm just excluding day traders here because it can get really complicated with day trading. So there are two main types of long-term investing. One is momentum, 
which you focus on price increasing very rapidly. And the other one is focused on discount, which means you're trying to buy stocks that is cheap after a fall and so on. So then it's safer uh, for you to make money depending on what your investing philosophy is. So for myself, I focus on value investing. I focus on finding stocks that are on a discount. So that's what I like because I like protecting my downside and I really dislike buying at a top. So if I suddenly got caught off guard or I make a mistake as a momentum investor, then I might be buying at a top, which is what I want to avoid. So let's first start off with general. Now here, the most important criteria that I find is usually market cap. If you have been following me for a while, you will know that I don't invest in penny stocks or small caps because I think those are quite risky from a financial perspective and also investing perspective. So here, usually what I would recommend you is to focus on mid-size, which is really the, the bare minimum, to mega and large, okay? So here, if you want to select these three together, then you would do what is called at least mid. Uh, so here, I will go back up. At least mid-size. So that is the criteria I would recommend you to use. Uh, so this will screen out a lot of penny stocks, the ones that are very, very risky. Uh, so then it should save you a lot of pain going through them. And this will actually reduce the population by a lot. So if I go back up here, I click all, you'll see that there's like 19,000 stocks. And just by doing at least mid cap, this will already help you get down to around 3,000 stocks um, immediately. So that's actually quite good. Now, the next criteria I want to go through with you, it's really technical analysis. And let me just take a look at my notes here. So I want to go to weekly EMA SMA. This is really a tricky one because it depends on what kind of investor you want to be. Now, if you are a discount focused investor like myself, then you want to find a stock that is kind of below a certain EMA. Now, if you actually go to the comment section and you join the free chart course, then you'll realize that I use 100 weekly EMA as the criteria. But of course, for a chart mill, 100 weekly EMA is actually not available. So the closest thing that I can find to 100 weekly EMA is this one. It's 30 weekly SMA. So that is simple moving average. That's actually what it means, which is fairly close. I mean, ideally, it should be 50, but I'm not too fussed about it. And what you want to choose is actually uh, above the price. So the EMA, which is the average, is above the price. That means price right now is below this weekly average. So this is an indication or a potential indication of a discount. So that's what I would look for if I'm using a stock screener. Obviously, I already have my watch list built out, so I don't really need to use a stock screener. So, but this is what I would do if I need to use one. So if I do that, then this will already bring me down to 661 uh, stocks. So you can see I'm really cutting down the population here. Later on, I'm going to talk about if you want to have more stocks or your, your criteria is too restrictive, then perhaps you can actually expand out a little bit and get more stocks. But before you get to less than 20, I don't think you need to worry too much about it. Now, of course, I forgot to mention, you do want to choose your industry. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave it because you can be in anywhere. You don't need to focus on the same industries that I focus on, okay? So this is the one you want to choose if you are a discount-focused investor. Now, if you are a momentum-focused investor, then it can be a quite tricky because it depends how you define momentum. So for example, a momentum investor might want to just focus on the daily SMAs. But if you are doing that, then I would still recommend you to have some sort of weekly one. But basically, if I'm a momentum investor, then what I would choose is the price needs to be above the 200 SMA, which let me just go here. Uh, SMA is below price. Let me just find that. Ah, okay. So I didn't select that correctly. So it's actually here where you get price versus SMA. So you want to use price is above SMA, which you want to choose 200, uh, which is right around here. Price is above 200 SMA. And then you probably want to use another criteria, which is price is above 100 SMA. And as you go down and you add more of these SMA and how it is above, it shows that the price is continuously above the average, which means it is going up, which means it has momentum. So you might want, even want to do 50. And if once it gets too restrictive, then you can consider removing it. So for example, price is 
above the 20 SMA, which is actually the last 20 days. That's pretty short. So now there are 700 stocks. So that's what I would do if I'm a momentum investor, uh, which I'm the opposite of. Okay. So for now, I'm just going to stick with my SMA weekly 30 and below. So price is below the 30 SMA here. Okay. So SMA 30 is above price. That's what I'm looking for. Now, the next tab you can really choose is fundamental analysis. And when I'm investing in stocks, one of the criteria I like to use is really the revenue criteria. And here you'll find that revenue growth. Now, I'm not too concerned about the exact revenue amount, but the growth of the revenue is important to me. Here, I have 661 stocks at the moment. I can actually increase this to be at least 0%. So that means there's at least revenue growth for the last five years because I do kind of want a company that is growing. And if I want to be more ambitious, because this is five years, right? So you got to take this 0% and divide it by five. Let me just zoom in, see if I can zoom in for you. So I want to maybe have at least 10% growth in five years. So if you take 10% divided by five, that's really 2%. So it's not a lot when you think about, you know, uh, a company that is dominating the markets or whatnot. So here I'm getting 128 results. So that is pretty good. So I can actually make this a little bit more aggressive or I can apply other criteria as well. But in this case, let's just for fun, make it 15 or even 20%, 25%, 30%. Across five years, it's growing around 6% a year, which I think is fairly reasonable. And right now the price is below, okay? So that's fantastic. So now you can see there's a short list of stocks that you can work with. And you always want to start off with something that is much smaller and much more restrictive. And if you can't find an opportunity there, then you can expand. So this is really pretty much how you would use a stock screener. When you're using Chartmill or when you're using Finviz, you can actually see this link here. And this link is actually changing the more criteria you are selecting. So this is actually quite useful because you can just bookmark this link. And the next time you can come back and all the criteria will already be set for you, so you don't need to redo the whole thing again. Uh, so that's actually quite good. Uh, now, once you find a short list, then what I would do is I would actually go through the chart individually and figure out whether it meets my criteria. In the comment section below, I actually included a link to my free chart course. So if you haven't grabbed that yet, then you can actually go and click the link and join. Uh, but what I would do is I'll actually go to tradingview.com, which is my charts. And here you actually see my charts. And in the free chart course, I explain how you read each of the lines, so on and so forth. And for example, let's say I'm interested in PTCT. Okay, I don't actually know what this is, but I'm just picking one out so that I can demonstrate it to you. Then I would go to my chart, PTCT. And then I'll look at it and I'll analyze it based on my technical analysis. So I don't rely on the technical analysis here that you see the rating. It actually doesn't really matter to me. Uh, what matters is that I'm looking for a specific stock, which is a great company that is on a discount uh, that I think will have a very high likelihood of winning. One of the downside of using the stock screener is that after you do the technical analysis here and you think it's okay, then what? So once you do technical analysis and you figure out that it is okay, then you need to do fundamental analysis, which is still okay, is still part of our regular process but there actually are a couple of additional steps you need to do in order to be comfortable with the stock that you're picking. You need to understand the business strategy of the company. You need to understand what management has been doing. You need to understand why that company is succeeding within the market. So you need to do more research compared to stocks that you already know, you already like, and you already trust. Because for example, I just pulled up PTCT, but I have no idea what this company does, what's their background, how many products they have, when are they launching new products, are they even making money, so on and so forth. So you do need to do that additional layer of work, which is why I usually don't recommend people to use a stock screener because it's kind of time consuming. But if you got time on your hands and you really want to use one, by all means, go ahead. And finally, you do need to analyze the news and the operations as well. And if that company is like a retail or whatnot, then probably you want to kind of just try out their products to get a feel of what they're selling. So that's pretty much what you need to do after you figure out a stock that you want to dig deeper into. My name is Eric Sito. I'm a CPA and I've been investing for 10 years. And this is really the video training series that I release for free 
to teach you how to use a stock screener. I was going to put it within the program Investing Accelerator, but then I decided it is more beneficial for me to release it for free so then you can enjoy it and become a better investor. And my goal is really to help people without a financial background to target 30% a year from the markets using an hour a week or so through a coaching program called Investing Accelerator. So if you want to learn more, I actually prepared a free case study in the first link below or the comment section. So you can click on that and you can register for the free webinar, how to get 30% from the market in 12 months. So you just type in your name and your email and you can watch that immediately. And if you want to grab the free chart course, like the chart I'm using right here, and you want to understand how to use them, how to read those indicators, then by all means, it's also in the comments and the description below. So you can click on that and you can grab it for free. And in terms of this video's giveaway, if we, if we reach 100 likes for this video, then I'll be giving away Harmonic Trading 2, which is a very beloved um, technical analysis book with a lot of different patterns uh, within it. So I think it will definitely help in terms of becoming a better technical analysis investor. So if you want to get that book for free, then make sure to like this video, click subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. For the next video, we're going to dive more into the criteria, and I'm going to talk about the five tips to use a stock screener to find profitable stocks. So make sure you watch that one. I'll see you in the next video.